Okay, what we're going to look at here, um, it's the idea of linear expansion. Uh, and one of the things we're looking at with linear expansion, um, if you're familiar with it at all, is uh, if we have uh, some pipe or some thin rod like this, as we heat up the thin rod, I don't know, fire, we'll use fire. This rod's gonna expand by some amount, okay? If this is the initial length of the rod, we'll call this L naught, some initial length, then this piece down here is some delta L, it's some change in length. And if we wanted to look at this and, you know, what is this new length of the rod here? Well, we can say that the new length of the rod is equal to the original length plus some change in the length delta L. And whenever we actually you know, work this out and whatnot, we have this equation, we find that the length is equal to L naught plus L naught alpha delta T. And what this alpha is here is this is what's referred to as a coefficient of linear expansion. And that coefficient of linear expansion there, it's just how easily does that material expand outwards um, as the temperature changes. So if we heat the material up, it'll expand. If we cool the material off, it'll contract. Uh, we looked at in class today um, a ring, and if you heat the ring up, what will the hole in the middle do? So kind of a classic little thing here if you have a ring. This is all solid here, the hole's open in the middle and you heated it up, what would happen to the ring in the middle? Would it you know, expand inward and close off? Or would that middle ring expand outward and open up? Or would it stay the same? And it actually does open up. We think about the whole material just kind of expanding outward. Um, this means that you know, if you ever had a, a ring trapped on your finger and you couldn't get it off, uh, easy way to get it off is to just stick your hand in fire. But then you know you run the, you run the issue of you know your hands on fire, so don't do that. Um, there's easier ways to do that with string, but uh, yeah, the the hole would actually expand here. So looking at this equation here, this is our equation for linear expansion. Uh, we can actually do the similar thing with a volume. We know volume is just a length times a width times a height, and if we did this for volume, the equation becomes v naught plus some v naught beta delta t, where beta is the coefficient of volumetric expansion, so it's how it's growing as a volume. And these L naught terms right here and this V naught term right there, those exist because at every single point along either the pipe or some sort of sphere that you're growing out, whatever it is, um, each of those little points has to grow. Um, so if you have more of those together, you know, you're gonna get a, a larger shift based off of that. Now, what we're trying to prove here is that this beta term is approximately equal to three times the alpha term, okay? And the way we're gonna do this is we're going to sit down and say, hey, back in, you know, whenever you took geometry, we understood that a volume could be written as a length times a width times a height. You know, that's, that's like a cube, right? We've got a cube here. It has some length, it has some width, it has some height. And if we multiply those together, we get some volume on the surface. So what we're going to do here is, instead of calling it lengths, widths, and heights, we're just gonna say, hey look, a volume is just a length times a length times a length, because that's what these are. These are just some distance you're moving through. It's just some length there. So if we do this, and we know what L actually is, L is this term up here. Well, we're gonna see where this goes here. We can then say that a volume, which is L cubed, is equal to this is the fun part. 
it's equal to L naught plus L naught alpha delta T times L naught plus L naught alpha delta T times L naught plus L naught alpha delta T. Yay! And if you're looking at this, this is a big thing to kind of expand out and foil. Um, some people like to pull the L naughts to the outside because they can be factored out of all of them, in which case there's no harm in doing that. Um, it's really up to you. But essentially what's going to happen here is we're going to have to uh, multiply all of these together. We're going to have to do a huge foil. We're going to have to go boom and then boom and then boom and then boom and get some new polynomial. And let's just get that real quick. If I do that, uh, L naught times L naught is L naught squared. Um, since this is actually a perfect squared here, I'm going to get plus 2 and then that's this uh, first term times the second term, 2 L naught squared alpha delta t plus, and then here's the L naught alpha t uh, last term here. So we're going to get this L naught squared alpha squared delta t squared times, and then this quantity here, L naught plus L naught alpha delta t. Woo, yay, fun. Okay. So we get this like huge thing over here. And we then have to distribute these terms through boom, 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 boom. So here comes six more. So if I do this step, L naught squared times L naught equals L naught cubed, then L naught squared times L naught alpha delta T gives me plus L naught cubed alpha delta t plus, here go my second terms, these are the 2 L naught squared alpha delta t times L naught. This gives me 2 L naught cubed alpha delta t plus, second term times the second term, this is 2 L naught cubed alpha squared delta t squared. Oh boy, plus, and my last terms, L naught cubed alpha squared delta T squared plus L naught cubed alpha cubed delta T cubed. Yay! That is giant. And this all equals L cubed that we had up there, which equals some volume. Now the interesting about this giant expansion here is at this point we can start combining like terms, but the interesting thing to note is that these alpha terms here are often a very small number. Okay, They're on the order of like times 10 to the minus 6. They're very, very small. You need kind of a very uh, long section of a piece of metal in order to start really seeing these expansion factors, like if you had a 600 foot bridge or so. Since these alphas are such small numbers, whenever we square a small number, like if you had, I don't know, one times 10 to the negative sixth, and you squared it, you'd get something like one times 10 to the negative 12th, which is extraordinarily tiny. Like, so small that you just don't even care about it at this point, especially when you're multiplying that by some L naught, some initial length of the bridge. Even if your bridge was a thousand meters long, that's still times 10 to the minus 12. It's so much larger, it's so much smaller rather than the length of the bridge that you're kind of pushing that all away. So what actually happens here is all of these higher order terms, what I mean by that is these alpha cubed terms, these alpha squared terms, alpha squared terms, all of these terms right here they essentially become a very, very small number, a number so small that it might as well just be zero. So we just don't care about these anymore because they're essentially zero. Because of that, we're only left over with this little bit here. We're only left over with L naught cubed plus 
And then, well, this L naught cubed alpha delta T and two L naught cubed alpha delta T, these are like terms. So that's three L naught cubed alpha delta T. Well, we already said that a length times a length times a length, or a length times a width times a height, that's a volume. Oops, no cube. Which means that this three alpha here must be approximately equal to beta. It's only approximately equal because we killed off all of this stuff over here, these higher order terms. They were very small, technically they're there, but we killed them off because they weren't very important. So we end up seeing that three alpha is approximately equal to this delta t here, um, eliminating higher order terms, and that's how we do it, just by expanding a length times a length times a length, knowing that a volume is a length times a width times a height. And we see that right there. And with that, proving that beta is equal or approximately equal to three alpha is finished.